How long might humans survive without a spacesuit on Venus? Venus is the closest planet to Earth and also shares some physical traits with it. However, due to its extremely high surface temperature, this very close world is unfit for any life. If a bunch of astronauts traveled to this planet and removed their suits, they would be startled that they could only survive for five seconds. What would happen if you removed your astronaut outfit while still on Venus? What would it be like to spend a whole day on the hottest planet? Join us on this information adventure to find out. Hello and welcome to Space Time. Subscribe to our channel and follow us. Venus is the closest planet to Earth and the largest planet to ours in size. Nevertheless, despite these similarities, Venus is not a world that people may inhabit. If humans decide to send a crude trip to this planet, the brave astronauts who travel into this inhospitable environment will face several perils and risks. The first difficulty is that Venus's orbit is 28% closer to the Sun than it is to the Earth. As a result, spacecraft flying to Venus must travel more than 41 million kilometers, passing through the Sun's gravitational well and losing some of their potential energy in the process. The potential energy of spacecraft bound for Venus is converted into kinetic energy, which increases the spacecraft's speed and makes it difficult to control. Unlike spacecraft that travel to Mars, spacecraft that travel to Venus accelerate so rapidly that if a group of astronauts were to travel to this planet, they would be subjected to significant accelerations that would leave them completely unconscious. So the mission would have to be entirely controlled by a computer or artificial intelligence that would place the astronauts in a safe orbit while they regain consciousness. People going to Venus would have to be very experienced astronauts or airplane pilots who are used to abrupt changes in speed in order to avoid becoming unconscious upon entry into Venus orbit. Travel time will not be an issue because Venus is the nearest planet to Earth, and a spacecraft would take a couple of months to reach its destination during the period of closest approach. But the obstacles will just begin once they arrive on Venus. A Dangerous Landing On Earth, we are accustomed to a tranquil environment, warm winds and light showers, but this is not the case on Venus. We didn't know what the surface of Venus looked like before sending exploratory probes there because the clouds were so dense that we couldn't see beneath them. On March 1, 1982, the lander of the Soviet space exploration mission Venera 13 breached the dense clouds of Venus to reveal what was underneath them. Since the 1960s, the Venera probes and NASA's Mariner 2 spacecraft have provided photographs of the clouds that have permanently enveloped Venus's atmosphere. We knew which elements may have formed in the clouds and what temperatures they must have had as a result of this. Aside from that, we had no idea what the surface of Venus looked like or what was hidden beneath those clouds. When the Venera 13 space probe eventually made it inside Venus's clouds, we discovered that the planet's atmospheric pressure was significantly higher than we had anticipated, at about 100 atmospheres. This is comparable to the pressure felt by a submarine when it sinks thousands of meters beneath the ocean. Fortunately, the Venera probe survived the entry and landed safely on the surface of Venus providing us with some stunning photos of this planet. This was the first photograph we had of Venus's surface. Venera 13 was able to capture this image and relay a large amount of pressure and temperature data to Earth before succumbing to Venus's tremendous pressure and temperature two hours after arrival. Later, Venera 14 would accomplish the same feat as her sister Venera 13 and in the same fashion, would be able to pierce Venus's thick cloud layer to deliver sound recordings as well as useful information for future missions. If we attempted to repeat this expedition today, but with human people rather than robots, we would face significant challenges. To begin with, entering a human-crewed spaceship into Venus's atmosphere will be risky. Normally, human-crewed spacecraft are not constructed to resist extremely high atmospheric pressures because such pressure does not exist in space. Spacecraft, such as the Venera 13 and 14 export probes, were able to withstand these pressures and temperatures because their individual components were modified with thermal insulation and vacuum sealed with extremely resistant materials. Allowing the electrical system and electronic devices to operate for a few hours before failing. However, in the case of a human-crewed spacecraft, it would not be sufficient to tweak a few components. 
The entire structure surrounding the spacecraft would have to be engineered to endure a pressure similar to that felt here on Earth at one kilometer depth under the ocean. This means that the spaceship carrying astronauts to Venus must have the resistance of a submarine. The difficult part is just beginning. Once the difficult task of building a human-crewed spacecraft capable of withstanding Venus's crushing atmospheric pressure has been addressed, the most difficult stage will begin battling the high temperatures. Remember that temperatures on Venus can reach close to 867.2 degrees Fahrenheit or 464 degrees Celsius in less elevated locations around the equator. Venus is thus hotter than Mercury, although being more than twice as far away from the Sun and receiving only 25% of the solar radiation that Mercury does. The reason for this substantial temperature differential is that carbon dioxide, nitrogen, methane and other chemicals that produce a persistent greenhouse effect predominate in Venus's atmosphere. Because these gases store a lot of heat, the heat that reaches Mercury does not depart as rapidly, keeping its surface boiling all the time. Astronauts who journey to this location will need to wear suits with unparalleled thermal insulation. Firefighters suits can survive temperatures of up to 932 degrees Fahrenheit or 500 degrees Celsius before deteriorating while astronaut suits on the moon might tolerate the same temperatures but in deep space. In other words, we currently have the technology to develop space suits that can withstand the high temperatures of Venus. The challenge would then be to design a suit that can withstand those temperatures while also enduring a pressure of 100 atmospheres. The greatest pressure diving suit known as of the date of this movie is the exosuit, which has proven able to resist pressures up to 700 meters deep, equivalent to around 70 atmospheres. Nuko Research's suit, which is a pressurized underwater exoskeleton that allows divers to work at extreme depths, has been utilized in underwater exploration missions. This means that the most pressure we have been able to withstand with modern technology is only 70 atmospheres. We still need to go one step further to be able to build a suit that can withstand the pressure of Venus while also enduring temperatures of 932 degrees Fahrenheit or 500 degrees Celsius. For the time being, spacesuits cannot survive the pressure of Venus for more than 10 seconds. An astronaut who decided to depart the ship and go for a walk on Venus would be unable to walk because the enormous pressure would drive him to the ground as if 10 vehicles were on his head. At that pressure, he couldn't lift a finger, and if the suit cracked, the temperature would begin to leak, roasting the astronaut alive in a matter of seconds. Astronauts who remained inside the spaceship however would not be fully secure from the extreme pressures and blistering temperatures. Rain that melts metal We are accustomed to rain on Earth which brings puddles in the streets, cool days and water for the plants, but on Venus, it is a warning message. On Venus, instead of raining water, it showers sulfuric acid. If you are unaware, this acid has the ability to melt various materials, such as lead or metal in a matter of minutes. A group of astronauts inside a spacecraft designed to withstand Venus's high temperatures and pressures would not be safe from the acid rain that would slowly seep into the ship's cracks, melting everything in its path, including power cables electrical systems, pipes and other systems. As if that weren't enough, the cracks caused by the sulfuric acid would cause the air to gradually leak from Venus's atmosphere, which is composed of carbon dioxide, nitrogen and methane, as well as other components that make Venus's air smell like rotten eggs. It would undoubtedly be an extremely terrible experience for astronauts. Thinking about it, this means that even if we can design a suit that can endure the pressure and temperature of Venus in the coming years, we will also need to find a technique to make that suit resistant to sulfuric acid. A difficult challenge for current technology to meet. Today, we know that some materials, such as polyvinyl chloride, also known as PVC or polytetrafluoroethylene, also known as PTFE, are relatively resistant to sulfuric acid. However, these materials would not withstand the high temperatures of Venus, so we couldn't cover the space suit, let alone a spaceship, with these materials. Stainless steel is another material that can withstand the sulfuric acid rain that falls on Venus, but it is not very moldable, in addition to being exceedingly heavy. A suit coated with this material would be so rigid and heavy that a person wearing it couldn't move. A spaceship experience is the same thing. 
If we covered every part of a spacecraft in stainless steel, the spacecraft would be too heavy to launch. We still lack the substance to complete this work. We will have to wait a few years until a scientist creates a new technological material that is resistant to sulfuric acid while also enduring high temperatures and pressures without deforming. Perhaps one of this channel subscribers is the future scientist who discovers the new material that will allow us to realize our dream of creating a suit that would allow us to walk on the surface of Venus one day. For the time being, current technology limits us, but it is worth knowing what the future difficulties will be in order to drive future engineers who will be in charge of making those ambitions a reality. Now it's your turn, dear follower, we want to hear your ideas, so share them with us. Do you believe humanity will one day develop the material required to make a suit that will allow us to walk on the surface of Venus? Let us know what you think in the comments.